Welcome to the Michael Cooley podcast on rethinking leadership. In these episodes, we will look at leadership with a fresh perspective and take your leadership effectiveness to the next level. For more information, go to cooleyinstitute.com and follow Michael's continuous learning insights on social media. Leadership is not a title. You don't just discover that you are a leader. It doesn't work this way. You go through life and then you find yourself in a situation where you have to do something to improve your reality. It's not a leadership. It's not that uh, you discover suddenly you're a leader. None of the great leaders, you know, they, they go home at night and they lie down and they say, wow, I'm really a great leader. Today I was an exceptional leader. It doesn't work like this. You live through life with people around you, whether it's family, your company, your team, your organization, your country. And then you face challenges. And then you see people collapsing around you, panicking, crying, in pain, in suffering, completely confused, disoriented. And then you feel the same. And then you ask yourself, okay, what do we do? What do we do? If you join them and do the same, then it's going to become worse. Because bad situations, if not treated, they will become even worse. So then you say, okay, I'm feeling scared, I'm confused, I don't know what to do, like everybody else, but we have to get out of this. So you start thinking, and you come up with options, and you start trying. And then you go to these people, and you try to mobilize them. You tell them, listen, I know it's hard, I know it's painful, I know it's challenging, I know it's scary, I know it's frightening, I know you don't see hope, I, don't, I know you don't see light. But what do we do? Give me an option. Because doing nothing is not an option. It is just going to, do, to make things much worse. And running forward towards you know, making ourselves, putting ourselves in a bigger danger is not, it's not a solution. You don't run towards danger. You f- you find the solution. So it's not an option. It is not an option. And when you start mobilizing people so that together, all of you or them, they stand up to their reality, they accept it and they fight it and they do whatever it takes to change their reality, solve their problem and create a better life. Then in that context, in that moment, you're exercising leadership. So, 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 and this might last one day or two days, or five days, or maybe you can exercise leadership if you just ask the right question that will get people to think and reflect. If you ask a question and that question gets people to think and reflect and question themselves and then come up with a solution where they would act in a better way, you've just exercised leadership without even knowing. But in all that context, you're not thinking about yourself. This is not an ego game. You're not thinking about yourself. All right, wonderful, good for you. You are exercising leadership. Wow, you're a leader. This is ego. In that moment, you're scared, you're confused, you're, you're overwhelmed. You're, you're, you're experiencing all these feelings like everybody else. However, on top of that, you're also taking responsibility. You're assuming responsibility. So you're living parallel. You're having parallel realities. The reality that you are in trouble like everybody else, but the other reality that you have to be the strongest person. And you have to be strong and inspire them and get them to do something. And when you go home, maybe you'll cry also. Maybe you'll collapse. Maybe you'll sleep. Maybe whatever it is. But definitely you will not come home and say, Wow, I am a great leader. I exercise leadership. It doesn't work this way. This is very superficial thinking to say, you know, I discovered I am a leader. There's nothing like this. Life is far more complicated, it's far more complex, it's far more real. This is fantasy, melodrama, you know, romanticism. I'm a hero, I'm a leader. Show me a hero who came home and said, wow, I was a hero. Doesn't work like this. Heroes come home with wounds. Or maybe even they don't come home. They die. That's what happens. That's the reality of leadership. Leadership is not a title. It's not uh, something to celebrate. It's a horrible thing that you have to do to help people around you get out of mess. Or in some happy times, maybe, you know, when things are better, come up with, you know, 
invent things, come up with a better reality, create opportunities, you know, if there's no disaster, then you have the luxury of saying, okay, how can we make life even better? Improve our profitability, improve our standards of living, make life even more pleasant and luxurious. Maybe if you have that. But usually it's about getting people out of problems and disasters and getting people to face challenges. Leadership is a hard thing. You don't have time to celebrate. It's not an ego thing. It's like you're in intensive care. When you're in intensive care, you get, a, you get a case where somebody is dying. What do you do? You say, wow, I'm a good doctor. You don't have time for this. You're just focusing on saving the, the patient. That's the context. That's the overall mood. Maybe, you know, three years later when you see the patient or the patient comes to you and say, remember, do you know who, you are, who I am? And he says, you say, who, who are you? I'm sorry, I don't remember. He said, you saved my life. Maybe on that day you go home, little happy, saying, maybe I was little useful. Apart from that, life is tough. Leadership is a very hard thing to do. That's what leadership is. That's what it's hard. That's what very people, very few people do it. Because it's about sacrifice, about pain. It's about accepting mess as your context of reality. That's how it's really hard stuff. The question is, at what moment did you decide to exercise leadership? I have hundreds of stories like this. I have hundreds of stories like this where I looked around, stories about my life and about people around me. Remember, I spent a good deal of my life as a war journalist. So I know how it works. I've seen people dying. I have seen countries dis being destroyed. I have seen nations destroying themselves. I have seen families destroying themselves, companies collapsing. I have seen that. I have seen the reality of life. Not only me. It doesn't make me special. Look around you. Just watch the news. There, some country in the world is in a mess. Some company is failing. Some family is being destroyed now. Some people are divorcing. Somebody is committing suicide. At the same time, somebody also is coming up with a new idea. Is becoming an entrepreneur. Somebody is creating something that will make life better so that's that's the reality of life life is not monotone it's full of spikes up and down so every time i saw myself in this situation i had to make a choice what do i do do i surrender do i be passive or do i be strong in fact today today i was in that situation today literally today i was in that situation where i noticed that a group of friends around me were literally collapsing. They were collapsing. Somebody said, I woke up in the morning, I was sobbing like a child because of the enormous amount of stress that this person was going through. Not even her mistake. You know, the whole situation around her was hard and accumulation of stress led that she collapsed. So what do you do in that situation? If you just sit and watch, they will collapse even more. Now. The funny thing is that you're feeling the same things. Maybe, you know, when I woke up in the morning, maybe I wasn't even, maybe I didn't even wake up in that morning. Maybe I was awake since, I don't know, 2 a.m. in the morning. But it doesn't matter. What matters is not just my reality, the reality overall around me. So I ask myself, what do I do in this situation? Do I say not my problem? I can do that. But what would that say about me? I found a fire and I just let it burn everybody. So I can't be passive. I have to do something, especially towards people I care about. So I had to intervene. And how did I intervene? By injecting encouragement, by reminding people of their strengths, by reminding people of their resilience. Because you see, it's not me who's going to do the job. It's not me who's going to face this challenge face on. Them, they have to do it because it's their reality. When we have a shared reality, it's also me. But it's not everybody's destiny is the same when you're exercising leadership and all of you are in a mess. So what do you do? You have to play a role, either negative role or positive role. There's no alternative. Either you make things worse or you make things better. Either you care or you don't care. Passiveness in the middle does not exist. It exists, but it's like not caring. 
So what do you do? You have to act. And the only thing that I could do at that time is, is injecting encouragement, injecting hope, reminding people of their resilience, of their strengths, of their past, right? Of the stories of their life, of the stories of their ancestors, reminding them of inspirational points that would give them hope and strength so that they can process all of this and stay on their feet and move forward. Now, as I said, I might be in the same place, but it's not about me in this context. It's about them, and that's what leadership is about. So I put my feelings on the side, and I played that role. And maybe if you look at my eyes, they will be even more tired than their eyes, or at least equally tired. But I had to wear the hat of exercising leadership, meaning I had to do something about it to help them deal with this, their realities. And I did as much as I can. Then I said, okay, after talking about it, injecting some encouragement and hope and strength, and resilience, I said, okay, let's do something. Why don't we meet tomorrow, early after tomorrow? So that we can, you know, create a process, get momentum going where we encourage each other to go through this difficult reality, this journey of survival that we're going through now, this challenge of survival. So I started mobilizing in that direction and other people jumped in and other people jumped in and other people started giving encouragement. And that's what friends and family and, you know, people who care do. And all of that is an act of leadership. So, 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 so when did I find myself <clears throat> in these situations? Every time I find myself in a mess, I have to ask myself, what do I do? If it's my life, either I surrender or I get myself out of it. And that requires mobilization of yourself. And that's self-leadership. Now, when it comes to people around you, you do the same and that's sort of classical leadership when it is about others so it happened before it happened today and it will continue to continue to happen again because that's how life is are some people born to lead because they have the right dna and others don't lead because they don't have what it takes genetically so you're also asking or in other ways you're asking are leaders born or made 100 percent leadership is not a dna issue 100 percent because all of us have reserves for strength all of us have reserves for resilience we're made for struggle we're made for challenges we're made to fight the difficulties of life that's how we are designed everybody the fact that you're alive now sitting in front of me we're conducting this interview you and i it means that at this age and at my age i have successfully managed to deal with all the challenges of my life 100% success, 50% success, 80% success, it doesn't matter. The fact that we are here together, it doesn't mean that our life was not struggle-free, disaster-free, earthquake-free. Of course we had that, but why are we here? Because we fought, because we're strong, because we're resilient, because we have, we're built for survival. So everybody has this within him or her by design. If you're alive, then you have it. If you didn't have it, nature will clean you up. When women have miscarriages, why do you think women by, nat by nature have miscarriages? It happens when nature decides that this baby or the, you know, the beginning of a baby doesn't have enough strength to deal with the challenges of life, weather, sicknesses, diseases, social pressure, you know, whatever life is about. So what happens is that a woman has a miscarriage or the baby does not survive. And there are millions of such cases every year, every day. But the fact that we're alive, it means we have it by nature. And when you have that, then you can exercise self-leadership. Now, when you exercise self-leadership, what's happening? You're indirectly inspiring others. Because when you are, you and people around you are in a mess and people see how strong you are and how you're managing and how you're not collapsing, what is happening to them? You're providing them with an example. Yes, they look at you, they say it's possible. If he can do it, if she can do it, then I can do it. So indirectly you're mobilizing through inspiration, 
Now, you can take it further by saying, you know what, I'm not just going to save myself, improve my reality, create a better life, get out of this mess, solve my problems, change my mind, change my thinking, do whatever it takes to make life better, remove this unnecessary stupidity and pain, right? When you decide to do that, when you decide that's possible, and you decide that I care about people around me and they should do the same, then you start exercising leadership in their life. How do you do that? By mobilizing them. How do you do that? By telling them what you say to yourself, by, by sharing with them your self-talk within you that, guys, we have to do something. So your question is, if everybody or everyone could lead, why don't we have far more leaders? In life, that's how it is. And not everybody exercises internal, emotional and mental strengths. Not everybody uses the capital that they have inside. Everybody can do it. By design, we have it. Have you, you've heard how, okay, I'll give you an example. You corner a small kitten, small cat, you know, in, you corner her, you threaten her. What happens? She becomes a tiger. You've seen hundreds of videos where deers, you know, zebras, relatively helpless animals, defeat wild beasts to defend their babies. So we have it inside, all of us have it inside. Now, some people, because of so many different different situations, whatever it is, they have a faint heart, whatever. They have, you know, they're going through difficult times or they don't have, they're not built, they're not bringing up the reserve of the, the capital of courage that they have within them, right? That, that's, that's, that's how it is. Now, some others have abundance of that courage for whatever reason. And they go inside and they bring all that courage and strength emotional and mental strengths and they say we're not going to accept our current reality we're going to change it now because problems cause pain because problem cause suffering you need people who have higher tolerance for pain higher tolerance for suffering right who have enough courage and strength to say listen it's going to be hard it's going to be difficult but whatever happens i'm not going to accept this point I will not accept this reality. I don't care what the price is. I will not accept it. We can do better. I will not accept this life for my kids. I will not accept this life for my community. I will not accept this co performance for my company, for my team, for my organization. We can do much better. And I'm ready to climb this Mount Everest. And I'm ready to go down this valley. And I'm ready to walk next to the volcano. And I'm ready to swim against the, the current. Some people have that. Anybody can do it. But some people go that deep to bring all these diamonds of courage, of strength from within them and do something about it. It is true that people who do change, who, who lead change, are minorities. Because why? I'll tell you why. Because it needs exceptional strength. It needs exceptional strength, exceptional st uh, courage, exceptional ability to tolerate more pain, more suffering, because there will be resistance, there will be difficulties, there will be hardships. That's why the minorities, that's why leadership, people who exercise leadership are always a minority. The majority, the majority by default will avoid pain, will avoid challenges will avoid confrontation, will avoid fighting. And this is where the notion of waiting for a savior comes. So the normal, the majority of the people say, we're waiting for somebody to come and save us. What does it mean? We're waiting for somebody who has the will, the ability, the care to go inside, bring as much courage as he or she can to the surface, summon as much strength as they can, right? and face this bad reality, face tyranny, face corruption, face failure, face negativity, face um, the dysfunctional and destructive mindset and mentality. 
face malevolence, face evil people, right? That takes courage. So some people manage to do that, manage to bring all that. Now, even when they do that, those people are still scared. They're still frightened. They're still in, insecure and not, but something is non-negotiable. They're not going to accept their reality. Okay, so rule of life, the majority will try to avoid that because it's hard. They can do it, but by choice, they don't do it. They wait for the minority and they call this minority a savior, but anybody can do that. Is it possible that people make mistakes while they're exercising leadership? 100%. 100% and that's what makes a difference between great leadership and average leadership let's say what makes great leadership great is that people when they exercise great leadership you know they listen to others they're humble they're not stubborn they surround themselves with courageous people with smart people and they examine all options they do their homework properly. They do it well. They're, they don't have an ego problem. They, it's, it's, you can't have leadership with saying my way or the highway or I don't care what you think. I'm right. It doesn't work like this. It's not about you. It's about the fate of all of us together. So great leadership asks this question. Am I right? Are there better options? Counsels others or gets counseling from others help me do i have blind spots is it something that i'm missing do we have better options they do that's what great leadership is now and when they do all of that then make they take they make a decision okay we're going in that direction and they go now the thing that they absolutely non-negotiable is surrender give up do nothing or accept defeat that's non-negotiable everything else in great leadership open for discussion but they have to decide. Okay, we talked about this for two months, three months, one day, whatever time we have, and now we're moving, and we're going to move full speed, but we're going to keep an eyes open, because it's possible that all our calculations are wrong, so we have to make adjustments, or it is possible that while we're moving in that direction, life changes. Things are always, not, life is not static. The situation changed. Your previous calculations do not work anymore. So you have to be adaptive. You sit again and ask yourself, is my option still the best option? Is my strategy still the best option? If it is, you continue. If it's not, okay guys, let's change. Or you discover that you had all your calculations wrong. It happens, we're a human being. It happens. So when you discover it's wrong, you correct it. But that's why you have to be very careful because when you're exercising leadership and you're mobilizing people the price of mistake is high you know let's give me an example if you're running a company of 10 people you make a mistake 10 people pay the price yes in general if you're running a company with 100 people 100 people pay the price 10,000 people 10,000 pe people pay the price if you're leading a country a country the entire nation pays a price now by mistake it happens but what also should happen is correction what also should happen is learning what also is happen is fixing mistakes what also should happen is saying I was wrong right and then changing course and that is that's the life of leadership <laughs> There is a huge difference between manipulation and exercising leadership. Manipulation is about influencing people so that they can act in a way that would serve your own interest. When you say manipulation, you've just removed truth. You removed authenticity. You removed, you removed honesty. That's what manipulation is. Manipulation is how can I manipulate you, influence you in a way so that without knowing you would act in, what, in, in the way that serves my intention. That's, not lead, that's, that's horrible. That's not leadership. Leadership is about mobilizing people so that they move towards 
a purpose, a direction that's better for them. For them. Leadership is the most honorable act that you can do. It's about them. It's what's best for them. That's not manipulation. That's mobilization. That is purposeful. And when we talk about purposeful, I mean a good purpose. A purpose that has, that's based on solid good values that serve the interest of others. That makes their life better. Now, are you influencing them? Influencing them? Of course you're influencing them. But influence here is the process, the technique, so that you mobilize them. They mobilize so that they move in the direction that's best for them, even if it was at your expense. Even if it was at your expense. Mandela, 26 years plus in jail. How was this at good for him? At his expense. Gandhi, I'm using this because there's international examples. How was this uh, in and out of jail? How was this good for him personally? Martin Luther King shot dead. How was this better for him? Exposing himself to so much danger. It is about them. Now, people talk about influence, uh, uh, leadership as being you know, the art of influencing people. It is, but this is a very dangerous definition. Tell you why. Because terrorism is also about influencing people. What do you think terrorists do? They create terror, i.e. overwhelming fear, so that people would act in the way that they want them to act, through fear. Through what? Through influencing them. That's why leadership is far more than just influencing. Influencing is a process, a technique. Of course you have to influence people. Otherwise, how can you mobilize? But that's not the key issue. The key issue is that you're mobilizing them for a good purpose that's better for them. That's best for them. And there's a million ways of influencing them. Million ways. You can even influence them without even paying attention to that. You can influence them by just being an example through the power of inspiration. So leadership definitely is not about manipulation. Definitely. It is the complete opposite of manipulation. Complete opposite. Thank you for listening to the Michael Cooley podcast. Please visit CooleyInstitute.com and send us an email. We would love to hear your comments and thoughts on this episode. And remember to follow Michael's continuous learning insights on social media.